All right. We are going to get rolling on this. Rob, we got you. You hear me all right? Hello? Hey, Rob, can you hear me? Ah, yes. So my volume was down and I was seeing your mouth move and I was wondering if that's what it was. <laughs> Not just giving you the cold shoulder. My bad. That's okay. That's better than the cold shoulder. All right. So, um, what's up, guys? Evan Melcher here with the uh, FFL Titans team training call on Thursday. We do this every single week at two o'clock, uh, where we bring in some superstar guests like the one we have on the call today. Super excited, Rob, to have you. Um, Rob Richmond, everybody who has a massive organization, been in the insurance industry for. Actually, I'm going to have Rob explain himself because he's going to do it better than I will. But Rob, Hall of Famer a couple of times, right? Yep. Um, I remember when I first started, dude, you were like, you were one of the top producers in the company at that point. Obviously, that's step back, you know, because your organization's gotten so big. Um, but a little background for the people who don't know anything about you. Uh, me. Give a bio. Um, so I've been in the business for 11 years. Came to FFL about three years ago. Um, I remember meeting you two and then forgetting who you two were and then meeting you again and then really starting to watch you and Ty grow. Um, and it's been a really cool journey. So I when I produced, when I produced at FFL, I was in the field full time. When I mean full time, I don't mean part time. I mean seven days a week. Uh, but in 18 months did like 1.6 million or so in personal production. So I produced at a high level and then stepped back and, and wanted to build and scale because I've been in the, I've been in the field for, you know, 10 years and that's a long time. I mean, <clears throat> for those of you in the field now, it's like, dude, two years feels like a grind and, you know, 10 years was enough for me. Um, I wanted to come in and make a splash, write a ton of business, get on the radar, get noticed, and then pay it forward and duplicate that as many times as I possibly could. Yeah, I, uh, I definitely will never forget that first meeting that we met you. Um, it was in like the Chicago area. I, I couldn't believe that you guys drove down from wherever you live to Chicago. I had no idea like how close it was. I didn't know it was like an hour and a half away. <clears throat> I thought you guys drove like four hours. I'm like, man. No, it was four hours. It was, it was four hours. Oh, yeah, dang. Okay, yeah. yeah. I'm like, damn, these guys are so committed. Like, I'm going to pay attention. I wish I had young people that were willing to drive four hours to a meeting. I just remember that that was the impact that we had on each other. I'm like, I need people like them to help build a big business. And then I remember, you know, listening to you do like mortgage protection in home. And I just remember like, whoa, it's so much to take in. Um, but then, you know, you put your head down and, and work really hard. And, and, you know, you get through that learning curve quickly. But um, you know, I, I noticed, I've always noticed a lot of things about you. I think the big, big thing has been consistency, um, in which as a producer trying to grow an agency, that's what comes first and foremost, right? Mm -hmm. What, um, what do you see maybe today or something that you used to do back when you're out in the field, um, on a day-to-day -day basis that are going to keep agents being profitable and successful in this business? Number one, protect your dial time. You don't even have to think about that. As a producer, your only job is to set appointments. Um, the people that are successful in this business are ultra protective of Monday between, and it depends on the type of leads you're running. Like, look, you guys know if you're running mortgage protection, you can set a pretty full schedule in about four hours of banging through them. So nobody's talking to me between eight and 12. I just, my door's locked. People knock. I pretend like I'm not in here. Um, and you're just grinding. I mean, I was so, I was so obsessed with protecting dial time. They're like, I would not get up to go to the bathroom. I would not pee until I had 10 appointments set. And it was like, I don't know about you guys. Sometimes these calls are funny. They, they go in a different direction. I'm like really superstitious. And I always have been. And I'm like, look, if I'm on a roll, whether it be a video game, which I haven't played in freaking two decades, whether it's, <clears throat> whether it's at the batting cage, whether it's the, it's, it's at, it's on a golf course, whether it's, it's shooting hoops. I'm like, if I pee, I'm going to pee out all my good luck. So I can't do it. 
I got to keep going and going and going until my, until my luck breaks. Then maybe I'll do that. I, Evan, you played ball. Ty, you played ball growing up. I don't know if you're as messed up mentally as I am, but it's like, if you got something working, you can't stop what you're doing until it doesn't work anymore. So I was very, very much like that with my dials. Wait, can I interrupt you real quick? Yeah. Literally today I was dialing and I didn't eat breakfast, but I had some fruit with me. I had an apple and a banana. I literally, I was, my stomach's growling. I keep thinking about that apple. And I'm like, I, I'm going to go grab that apple until I get to 10 appointments. I finally got to 10, ate my apple. <laughs> so I, got the same thing is, I was the same way. I think you're going to find a lot of, a lot of people are very similar to that, where you just, if you're in the zone, like the zone is valuable. So you can't get out of the zone once you're in the zone. Not worth it. Yeah. I like that a lot. Okay. So that, so the day-to-day -day thing you say is like the, the dialing, protecting that. What about on like more of a week to week? Again, so to get consistent results, you've got to be consistent in your, in your daily habits. So I would just, I would do the same thing every single day wake up at the same time, do the same, like meal prepping on Sunday. I'm like, yo, I'm eating the same thing for breakfast. I mean, the same thing for lunch. Tuesdays, I'm going to do the same thing for dinner. Wednesday, I'm going to do the same thing for dinner. You know, I'm going to be in the field from these times. I'm going to go to the gym at the same time. I'm going to, I'm going to make sure the, I'm so superstitious. I'm going to make sure these things are clean. So when I, I go to like get dressed for the field, like I get to wear my good luck pants, stuff like that. And and for me, it was being rigid to those, to those requirements that I needed for myself to not have any like, dude, for me, sensory issues were big. So I'm like, if I get thrown off by one thing, if I'm like, <clears throat> I, I went in the field like this, by the way. So like, I would want to make sure that like my good luck pullover, my backwards hat that I'd wear in the field, like I need to make sure those were there. If I didn't, I'm like, oh, shoot, my day's jacked. So I was just like very disciplined. I'm going to go get my workout at noon. I'm going to hit the field straight from the gym. If I have downtime, I'm not going home. I'm going to door knock or I'm going to find a parking lot. Um, if I'm hungry, I'm going to eat pretzels and beef jerky and bang energy drinks. Like, and this is just what I'm going to do. Those, those are my field meals. Um, and then I'm going to get home whenever I get home. And then I'm going to fall asleep like a rock. I'm going to wake up and do it again tomorrow. And I never like, I never got mad at that process because <clears throat> I knew that the way to not do that anymore is to be really good at doing it for, for an extended period of time and knowing that there's light at the end of the tunnel. So I knew if I worked seven days a week for two years, I was going to have enough money in my bank account that then I could pull back out of the field. I could build a business and then use that capital not to buy like nice stuff. I didn't level up my, my, my life at all. You know, in this business, it's crazy. You can make seven figures really quick for the last three years. I've, I've made that but my, my house is the same. My car, like until my lease went up two weeks ago, was the same. You know, like I didn't buy new things and go on vacations. I just like, I bear it down. And I said, this is what it's going to take to, uh, you know, because integrity was, was a, six months in integrity happened for Family First Life. So I knew just what it took. Um, but to <clears throat> like, to be very specific with like what I did, um, Again, the, the superstitious thing is I get a lead in like I'm here. You get most of you guys have your cameras. on. I mean, Evan, you get your leads in at like you're in central time, right? Yep. So you get your leads in at, at nine o'clock at night. Like the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> at 745 in the morning is I'm calling those leads. Did you ever have lead concepts? You ever use that mail drop company? Yeah, for a little bit. You did. So like for, for them, you're getting those at like, <clears throat> excuse me, at like 430, 431. I don't care what I'm doing. I'm dialing those leads. Cause I was fully, I, I like had myself fully convinced that if I didn't dial that lead, the second I got it, I think all mail companies are, are slime balls. So they probably sold that to five other people. I need to beat those five other people to that lead. So I would be so aggressive with dialing to try to get myself in front of those leads first. And that's when I was getting brand new stuff. I think the, the real that and anybody can make money on, on new mailers. Like you get new mailers, you work, you spend the time, you run to it, you know, you're going to be profitable. I think the thing that I did really well <clears throat> in the beginning, which is what you guys respected about me, I, I have to believe, is that I wasn't, I didn't have any good resources when I started. And good CRM leads are not bad. They're just, they're not brand new mailers. And I had not worked a brand new mailer in a long time. Who's new? And most of the people on this call knew ish i'll say 50 50 if the new people on here just 
if you could be awesome and turn on your cameras, I just want to know who I'm talking to that that's new. And you could like raise your hand if you're new. All right, cool. Top corner guy, center guy, bottom left guy, bottom right. All right, cool. Um, awesome. So what I would do is I would never get upset if a if a CRM lead hung up on me because it wasn't expensive. So if I'm going to spend a thousand dollars a week on leads, I know like if I go on the CRM, get one, two, three month old, you know, mortgage leads are final expense leads. I'm going to get a hundred, 120 of them. For me, that was like, that was the right number. I'd need that to feel confident. So if I got hung up on, I didn't care. So on Mondays, <clears throat> and this is like, dude, this is just, it's so human. Like you see top, you see producers. I'm like, I don't even know. Like, I don't even like respect my results that I got anymore. Cause it was a couple, it was like a year and a half ago, but when I was doing it, like I was making it look easy because I was torturing myself on, on dial day. So Sundays I would get so anxious before the phones, but like <clears throat> I could like, I wouldn't even have, I couldn't even sleep. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to war on Monday morning. I need, I, I like, I gotta, I gotta get myself to sleep to get a fresh start. So I would get there. I would get to the office at seven. I wouldn't start dialing until 10 to eight or so. No, we're not supposed to dial until eight, but whatever. <clears throat> and I, and I just dial until I burned two iPhone batteries. So I wouldn't like count my dials. I would just burn two phone batteries. I'd, I'd go to the gym. I would charge, charge my phone. And then I'd go back to the office and I'd do it again. And then like, I knew that if I did that, there was no way I wouldn't have enough activity. But here's the thing. Like people that come into this business usually did not start in this business. And you're usually in, <clears throat> and usually come, you probably didn't love what you were doing before you came here. And you didn't five days a week, nine to five, eight, whatever you were doing. For me, I was, I was happy if I just hated my job two days a week. So for me, those two days a week, I was very, I was very, I was very okay with hating Mondays and Thursdays because I loved the field base. I could torture myself on Mondays and Thursdays, just like brutal, brutal, a beating, right? And my burn piles used to be this freaking thick. I'd fold my leads in half respectfully, wouldn't crumple them and throw them because I have bad attitude. It's going to, going to translate. I'd fold them nicely. I'd put it on the ground. <clears throat> and at the end of the day, I judged my dial days by like how big that burn pile was. I knew I was going to have eight to 10 set. And when I was calling those CRM leads, like, if I could set eight to 10 very intentional appointments, like I was going to be really good. Um, and that's just, that's just to show you, like, I was not like gangster. Um, like I didn't set 40 appointments a week. Like some of these guys like that, that to me was, was like unattainable. I would have loved that. I just didn't know how to do it. But what I knew is that if I just was so intentional about qualifying my appointments, so they knew exactly why I was coming and I dialed an entire day, to get eight to 10 good appointments set for the next two days. Like I, I was feeling pretty good about that. So I'd hate Mondays and Thursdays, but I would love my days in the field because they knew exactly why I was coming. I, mean, I was, do you guys, do you guys use, do you guys use your own mortgage script or do you guys use the one that I wrote just out of curiosity? Like the overqualifying one, like, Hey, Evan, Rob Richmond, give me a call about the mortgage protection response. You send on your loan for Chase. How are you? Look, I'm calling because this is the type of coverage where if anything happens to you or your wife, the mortgage is taken care of for your family. And that's what you were looking for, right? Do you guys use that one? No. You don't. Okay. So here's my script. That's what you're looking for, right? You say, yeah. Well, Ty, is that your wife next to you, Ty? Good to meet you, Mrs. Sagal. All right. So did I say your last name right? Is it like Steven Seagal or is it Sagal? No, it's Sagal like a bagel. Sagal like a bagel. Easy enough. All right. So... And that's what you're looking for, right? So look, um, need to verify a little bit of information here and I'll have you right off the phone. So got your address as 123 Main Street in Kansas City. Perfect, got your loan amount as uh, 250,000. Is that correct? Ty, just role play with me. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Is that a new home purchase for you or a refinance? Just moved in. Just moved in, congratulations. Do you love it? <clears throat> love it, man, love it. Feel like home yet? You still walking in the walls in the middle of the night? Still stubbing my toes in the walls. There we go. I'm trying to get a laugh. I'm trying to get a laugh there because otherwise I have to do an awkward, uncomfortable. <laughs> anyway, laugh. And I'm trying to get you to do it so I don't have to do that. Um, point of that is to be a person, not a salesperson, right? The more I can get out of that sales role, the better. So ballpark for me with the new monthly mortgage. I'm just going to role play my phone script with you guys so you hear it. Ballpark for me what the new monthly mortgage payment is on that. Oh, uh, 800 bucks a month. 800 bucks a month that set up over 15 or 30 years, 30, 30 years. 
Um, and I got your date of birth as 7891. And I got your wife's as 101295. Yeah. All right. So I get a ton of these response cards each week's tie. So I have to do a little bit of screening here health wise. Um, you're young. I'm guessing you're healthy. No major health issues in the last seven years. Heart attacks, strokes, cancers, nothing like that. Right. What about the small stuff? You take anything on a preventative basis or on as needed high blood pressure, cholesterol, thyroid, anxiety, um, any kind of diabetic medication? No, just a small anxiety medication. I see a note on here. You can't hear volume. Can you all hear me? Yeah, we're good. We're good. I, I'll, I'll move closer to my speaker just in case. Um, so none, none of the small stuff either? Just uh, anxiety medication. Anxiety medication. All right, no problem. Your wife, anything? She taking anything? No, she's, she's golden. She's gone. I right, perfect. So Ty, the reason I was asking you all these questions is because I'm a broker. So what that means for you is I'm going to shop and customize the best plan to not only fit your situation, but most importantly, your budget. So Ty, what I do with all my clients is set up 15, 20 minutes at the most, get together with you, go over all your options, answer your questions, of course. And look, if I can show you all something you like, great. And if not, no problem. Fair enough? Sounds good. Fair enough. So on here, it says best time to catch is around five o'clock. Is that when you're leaving the office or getting home? Leaving the office, usually get home about 5.30. About 5.30. Now, Ty, are you and your wife the kind of people that like to get all the business out of the way before dinner so you can relax? Do you like to have dinner relax first and then do business later in the evening? Get it done before. Get it done before. Perfect. Just like me. So what I can do, Ty, is I got something tomorrow at 5.45 or I could do a seven o'clock on Wednesday, I know that's a little bit later, but between those two times, which one works the best for you? 5.45. 5.45 tomorrow. Now, real quick, before I have you off the phone, um, I'm gonna shoot you over a picture of my a text with a picture of my business card, date and time that we're getting together. So if anything pops up for whatever reason, um, let me know, but no news is good news. But real quick, the numbers to your house, where am I gonna find the address? On the house, the mailbox, or the curb? That should be on the, the house and the mailbox. All right, beautiful. <clears throat> so look for that text in about two minutes. Again, Ty, no news is good news. Look forward to seeing you and your wife tomorrow at 545. Hang up, do it again. Now, here's what, here's what I liked about that script is that it was ultra qualifying. So there's no, there's no, they don't, they're not wondering why I'm coming. There's a lot of clarity there. It's super transparent. I gave them so many outs <clears throat> that if they didn't want to see me, they were going to let me know. And I wanted that because when you're selling at a high level, you know, FFL is like a pressure cooker. It's going to turn coal into diamonds really quick. But the way you turn into a diamond is to reinvest all your money into your business. So what I would do in my downtime is rather than drive around and get no show, I'd be recruiting. I'd be developing agents. I'd be doing whatever I wanted to do, not wasting my time driving to somebody's house that changed their mind, didn't want to see me. <clears throat> now with the CRM leads, man, my throat's all junky. Excuse me. That noise makes me want to blow my head off. So I apologize for that. All right. So now when I'm dialing CRM leads in the beginning, <clears throat> getting a ton of rejection, a ton of rejection. So in the beginning, I thought all leads were bad leads when they told me, number one, already took care of it. Two, met with an agent, not interested. Number three, we didn't qualify. Number four, we got coverage through our job. Um, whatever, whatever reasons, whatever nonsense reasons they give you. Right. I'm like, ah, oh, dead lead. Ah, oh, dead lead. Ah, oh, dead lead. Ah, oh, dead lead. But, but then I realized that can't be true. Can't be true. These can't all be dead. And by the way, I'm now like <clears throat> down to like the last little bit of money I have been in the business for a long time, very irresponsible with money, made bad decisions, didn't have much when I came over here. So I spent like all my money on leads right in the beginning and had no idea how to deal with them. So I'm like, I am in a position now where I got no choice but to figure this thing out. So I threw a Hail Mary pass. I'm like, look, I have no idea if this is going to work. But what I do know is that I'm going to go completely broke if I don't try something a little crazy just to see if I can get through to some of these people that were, quote, dead leads. So they're like, hey, we already took care of it. Hey, Ty, perfect. That's exactly why I'm calling. They don't know what to do with that. They're like, oh, it's like a, like a little jet. Stun them. Right. So you have like a little bit of time to get your mini pitch out before you go into that, into the mortgage protection presentation script that I would give. And they type perfect. That's exactly why I'm calling. I own the agency locally here. And what I found is that there's a ton of, I just literally off the cuff this. I couldn't believe that I said this, but it worked. 
Ty, re- perfect. That's exactly why I'm calling it. Only agency locally here. And what I found is that there's a ton of bad agents running around showing the right people the wrong product. And nine out of, and, and I'm in the business of doing damage control, unfortunately. Now, nine out of 10 times, I'm able to get our clients into a significantly better position financially, whether that means better living benefits for exactly what you're paying or save you a little bit of money on your current coverage. But either way, you know, I'm not in the business of wasting time, Ty, but best case scenario, you're the one out of 10 that I can validate that you met with a good agent. And good for you because there's not enough of them out there. So best case scenario, I can validate you're, one, you're the one out of 10. Other best case scenario, Ty, is I can get you into a better position financially. Okay. Now, again, not in the business of wasting time, but need to verify a little bit of information to see if it makes sense for us to get together. Sound good? And like this crazy thing happened. They like started to say, yes. Yeah, cool. Let's go through it. So then I'd give, and I can give you guys that rebuttal. It's all scripted out on my website. So if you want it, you can, you can let me know and I'll send it to you. And then I'd go into my mortgage protection script, but here's the deal. How many times do you think, uh, how many times do you think that worked, right? Like if I said that to these leads that I was calling dead leads, if I gave that five times, how many times do you think I could, how many people do you think actually listened to me? How many? They all listen, but you've probably gotten booked one or two out of that. Yeah, like one, one. So one out of four was my target, but I would, I would take one out of five. I wasn't going to like be really mad about it. One out of five, I'd take one out of four. I knew I was doing good. If I expected one out of three, it's going to be a lot of heartbreak and rejection. But because I bought so many leads, I could use, and what I would do is I'd make piles of 20. This was good for my, for my mind, from like my headspace. I'm like, cause I, I hated calling the same leads over and over and over again. So I'd take, let's just say 60 leads. I'd break it into piles of 20. I'd single dial it. Then I'd go through again and double dial it. And then it was like a little mini accomplishment because I'd get through that. And then I could move on to my second stack and my second stack. I'm like, huh, brand new leads. This is amazing. And then my mindset was like fresh and cleared. So I'd probably make, I don't know what that's 180. If I had 60 and nobody picked up, I probably made like 200, 300 calls. Um, but I get the people to pick up like that double dialing thing really worked for me. So I'd get that. I, that would, that worked for me. So I'd probably make two, 300 calls. Um, you know, if I'm setting eight, that means I'm talking to 40 people, which ain't bad. So that makes sense. Every five or six dials, I'd get a pickup. Um, and every day I was like, every time it was like Christmas, I'm like, Oh, got another shot. They'd tell me, no, fold it up. Bad attitude whatever, fly kite, cool, pound sand, cool, put in the pile. But dude, the thing was, is that when I was setting appointments in that way, like people knew exactly why I'm coming. I'm like, tell me a little bit about what you're looking for. And they're like, well, you told me you're going to come over and like, look at my policy and validate that I got a good one or put me in something better. Let's just do that. It was magic. So I like barely get like, I, there was no sales pitch in the house. <clears throat> so I go and do that. But most people are very unwilling to take that much rejection, to hear the word no 32 times in a day, like that sucks. But it worked really well. You want to talk about consistency? Like here was my consistency is for 75 weeks in a row. This is really crazy. 75 weeks in a row, I was between 22,500 and 27,500. There were three weeks out of that. One time I did 18.7. That was Valentine's Day weekend. I was out for two of those days. And then there were two weeks where I had some big cases where I wrote over 30,000, never had a $40,000 a week, never was under 15. I lived between 22.5 and 27.5. It was just, that was my range. It was within three to 4,000 every single week. Now, here's what I did. I worked seven days a week in the field. I did that because everybody's like, oh, there's only so many prime slots, like, ugh. How can I see more of these only available between five and seven? Like I can only do that three times a week. Like, okay, that's not really true. You can do a Monday, you can do a Tuesday, you can do a Wednesday, you can do a Thursday, you can do a Friday. You got your prime times on Saturday, which are, you know, your nine, your 1030, your 12. You can do that. And guess what? You can do it on Sunday too. Sunday's not a day off. Sunday was my favorite day. Thursday night. And Sunday morning were my favorite days to run appointments. 
I hate pressure. So I front load the hell out of my schedule. Everybody on this call has sold a policy, right? For the most part, we've all sold the policy. We've all made calls. Now, as a show of hands, like who has made that call? And you're like, oh my God, this is the appointment that's going to make my week. Right? Like everybody, right? And every single time that appointment calls and reschedules, it's just how it works. And it's like two hours before the appointment and you're just swearing. I'm not going to do Right. But that one, I'm going to put Thursday night. I'm going to roll it to Thursday night or Sunday morning. Okay. And then the best appointments are always going to be my Thursday night or Sunday morning. Thursday night, I'm always writing 4,000 every single time. And that doesn't suck. Going into, going into the actual weekend plus 4,000 takes some pressure off Fridays. My Fridays were always my old people. So I would set an early day on Friday. My day it would be like a 10, an 11, 15, you know, a 12, 30, 1, 32, 3, 4. I was done by five. In my head, and don't do this, this is just the way my, my, my messed up brain works. I'm like, ah, I'm not going to see people after five o'clock on Friday. So I'm not going to set those appointments. I need a date night because I'm working so many. I'm working every day. I don't want my wife to leave me. So fr- she gets Friday night. So I'm coming home. I'm home by 530 on Fridays. The thing with seniors is that there's no sales pitch with seniors. It either makes sense or it doesn't. You know, I'm watching like Ty and Evan not. It's like you go into these, like everybody hates a 72 year old mortgage protection lead, but I freaking love that one. It's 3000 or it's nothing. And it's like 15 minutes, you know, it or you don't. And I love those. So my Fridays were always massive or like abysmal. There was no middle ground. There was no gray area for me on Fridays. So I'm at 4,000 going into Friday. And then I'm either at 11,000 or 4,000 going into Saturday morning. Um, My Saturdays, I'd always do a deal or two. Saturdays were never my big days. I always admired people that had big Saturdays. I didn't know how you did it. So then I'd either be at 4,000, I'd either be at 6,500 or I'd be at 13,500 going into Sunday. But Sunday were my best appointments, my two best appointments, 1030 and 1145. I was obsessed with football. I'm a Browns fan. Everybody can laugh about that, but I had to go see that game. So I was super, again, superstitious about that. I needed to be there with a beer in my hand watching kickoff. But what was great about it is that these were like 20 minute appointments and they were always big ones and they were sticky and they had just gotten back from church or they had just done something that they liked. They're in a great mood and they're like, all right, come in, do business, get out. Those are my favorite appointments. The cheeseburgers and the beers taste way better. They're colder and more delicious if you made $3,000 in 45 minutes. Like that's just in my, in, I believe that. So I'm like, I'm going to go put in a little bit of sweat equity on Sunday morning. And now I'm going to be at 15.5 or 16.5 or 10,000 going into Monday. Now I don't have that much pressure because my goal every week, my drop bed was 20. So I'm like, I either got to double, <clears throat> double what I did over the weekend, which I do all the time, or I got no pressure. I just got to do one or two deals on Tuesday, Wednesday. Well, the most amazing thing happens when you don't have pressure. You like write more business. Best time to make a sale is when you don't have to make one or right after you just made one. So I was a big fan of taking the pressure off of my back half of the week by just going savage Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then I felt really calm. Then Mondays weren't so scary. It took like three weeks to get rid of the Sunday scaries because I, I, was, always, I was always loaded up going in um, to the back half of the week. I just rambled for like 30 minutes. What else do you want me to cover? or take questions those are some great tips from a great producer we appreciate that rob um one thing that stuck out to me was talking about the rejection part of it Mm -hmm. right and you you and i we had a conversation recently and i think one of the big things i took away from that was like the insurance agents the the managers the producers whatever whatever level you're at the people who have the most success or who go big with this are the ones who are able to like conquer adversity the most, mm-hmm. whether that's on the phone, you're getting told no or whatever. I don't know if you can touch on that a little bit for the folks on here. Um, I don't know if it's more of like a perspective thing. But I mean, uh, we talk, we talked about a recent conversation we had. Yeah. Um, what part of that do you want me to touch on? And you said the rejection part. We talked like what, what aspect of that? And I'd, I'd love to. I think more just like how we got to take a step back, be grateful for. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, 
I think I was unique when I came into this business because I had a job where I was making a bunch of money, but I had, I had just gone through a divorce and like, I, I didn't have much to show for it. And I was living above my means. So I was just like living paycheck to paycheck, making 300 grand a year. I don't think most people come into this business doing that. I talk, I was talking to Evan. I don't even, Ty, I don't even think we got into what you did before this. I just know Evan was a photographer and you weren't, you weren't making a ton of money. And I think a lot of people come into this with that. Um, whether you're coming from another IMO or a captive agency um, and it wasn't for you or things happened, like we all came here for a reason, you know, like we didn't come here because like FFL just sounded great. It's because you, there was enough pain in what you were doing that pushed you to take a leap of faith to go into a hundred percent commission sales role. And like, that takes a lot of bravery. So you guys got to pat yourself on the back for taking that leap of faith. Cause it, it is really scary to come into this thing with a couple grand to your name and a maxed out credit card. And then you got to figure it out. Like it really, really is not easy. Um, for me personally, uh, when I came into this, like I just knew rejection was part of it. I was telling, I was telling Ty, Ty and Evan, yes, last night when we talked is like, I, Evan, you weren't even on the call, but I think I've told you this before is like, I, I'm like as, as hideous of an analogy as this is like, I'm like a cockroach. So you can't kill me. Like I can survive a nuclear attack and I'm, I'm like still going to be able to take one more step forward. And, and I, and I love that because like you can throw some really heavy stuff at me and it's going to punch me in the face and it might, it might like my jaw might be broken, but I would find a way to still give presentations, like writing it out longhand in pen and paper. So like with this business, when you get rejection or you get chargebacks, um, it's okay. And what doesn't kill you what doesn't kill you allows you to see it coming again and know how to respond to it in a more mature way. When I first got into the business, I was such a hothead. I, I, I hated everything. Oh, F this, F that, no shows. I'd like literally lose my mind, go to a gas station, chug a Red Bull and like start swearing. It was like comedy. As, 20, as a 24 and a half, 25 year old, <clears throat> 36 now, um, everything's easier. A no show is okay. Like now I, now I see it as an opportunity to recruit or set better appointments. Like I see it as a, as a, as a growing thing. Um, <clears throat> chargebacks are real. I mean, everybody on this call, you guys are engaged. So applaud yourselves for that. You guys are going to be the winners. You've all had chargebacks. It's okay. You know, um, what's re hold on. What rejection? I'm like, not talking about the right thing. What's it? What, char what, what rejection do you want me to talk about? No, you're good, dude. You're the reject, I, I mean, the rejection, dude. I mean, here, here's some self accountability stuff is like when you leave a house and you don't make a sale, it's your fault, not the clients. Mm -hmm. Like, let, like, let that sink in. Whenever I'm making, whenever I close historically in my career, 84%, which is pretty high. And when I wouldn't, when I wouldn't make a sale, I'd like be mad for two seconds and then look in the mirror and be like, you were so salesy in that appointment that I do not blame these people for not buying from me. Or you were so transactional that you've done this so many times and you're just burnt out that you gave a shitty pitch. And that's why they didn't buy. I would not have bought that presentation. So if any of you have closing issues, like it's probably your fault and you weren't the best. This is, this is a good, this is a good topic. You've got to be, how long, Evan, how long is your average presentation? from start to finish right in application or yeah yeah apps in in the door out the door back into your car 25 minutes okay so that's really freaking good mine was like 35 mine was like 35 minutes so think about that and evan you get more activity than most how many appointments how many sits do you get you actually see like a day if i'm running full send schedule how many are you seeing when I'm full send schedule, I'm at 35 a week. I'm in the field four days a week. You see 20 of those, 25 of those? Yeah, I would say I see two-thirds of them. So two -thirds, so that's, that's a good show, right? So you're going to see two-thirds. Let's just say you set 30, you see 20, yeah. right? If we do the math on that, that's 450 minutes, which means that's like divided by, tw divided by a third, whatever that is. That's like, that's like you got to be good nine hours total a week. 
Like that's not that hard. So my thing was I know myself and I know that like I get wrapped up in stuff. I'll get a text from an agent that pisses me off. And then I got to go into a house and like check myself and not bring that negativity or that frustration or that, that like scrambled egg brain feeling that we, all of us have had if we're building. I knew if I only had to do that three or four times a day, I could be a, I could be an adult enough that I could check my BS getting out of my car to give these clients the most perfect version of myself. Evan, you do that really fast. So you can do three of those an hour, baby. Like you got, yeah, you can get some volume in there and you can be good. But like, I can be a train wreck when I get back in my car. I am not allowed to give that to my clients. They deserve better than that. So I think, and, and I fully convinced myself, and this was an old AIL trick. And some of you probably came from there. And if not, you know, people from there is I would, in the beginning of my career, I would, I would park like three houses down from like the driveway I was supposed to go into. And I would close my eyes and envision these people dying tomorrow, not coming home. And the responsibility that I had on my shoulders to go give them the most perfect presentation I could give and ask the best questions, knowing that if I didn't, that blood was on my hands. So I started doing that and it created this sense of urgency when I'd communicate with these people that would not have been there had I not done that. I don't know if you guys have any stories about missing an appointment or somebody no showing an appointment or canceling an appointment and then dying. Evan, you've been in this business. Have you had one of those yet? Dude, literally today. So, you know, Kiefer Zimmerman, obviously. Yeah. Her brother, Kaler, he's down in the office next to me. He comes in, he goes, dude, flip this lead over. Flip it over. It was, what's today? So today's 5-5, five, five, right? So on 3-20, he called. She said, we can't do it this week. Check back in a couple of weeks. And then literally the couple of weeks that he was supposed to check back, he didn't because he wasn't in the area again. So he just got back to her about a month and a half later. Husband died two weeks ago at age 58. It's unbelievable. So like that stuff, like we can say this and then I'm, I'm, I'm not happy that you have that story to tell, but I'm glad for this example. <laughs> like you can say that it validates the point is that like, guys, you got to have urgency. <clears throat> and then Here's the other thing. And I can leave you with this. And this is silly and goofy. And this is, this is me in a nutshell. Um, everybody's had a bad day and been in like the worst mood in the world, probably more now than ever, because like there's pressure and it's like, Oh, I'm trying to do this. And it's hard. Ugh, all this stuff. Right. So this guy, Dave Alvarado was my mentor at, a, at another company I was at most put together guy. This guy definitely grew up with nothing. Hispanic guy now, now has built this massive business and incredible inspirational leader. <clears throat> and he goes, man, everybody thinks I'm put together, but I'm really a train wreck. And I need to tell you guys what I do to get myself in the right headspace when I'm having a bad day. And I hope that one of you on this call freaking does this. I made a couple of my agents do this the other day. But if you're in a bad mood, doesn't matter what's happening at home, arguments with your wife or a girlfriend, wave of chargebacks, four no's in a row, no shows all day, and you're getting to this last one and you owe these people it, but you just can't get yourself in the right headspace. You got to look in the mirror and you have to do this twice. You got to look in the mirror and say, I'm good. I'm great. I love myself. And you do that twice. And this crazy thing happens. You smile because you're so, you look so stupid and so silly, but you smile instead of frown. And when you knock on that person's door, you're smiling because you're still thinking about how silly that was that you just were talking to yourself like a schizophrenic maniac, telling yourself, I'm good, I'm great, I love myself because maybe somebody didn't tell me that today. But you can tell yourself that today because you are good, you are great, you do love yourself because you're good at this. And your role in these clients' lives is more pivotal than you understand or you can even, you can even imagine because the worst day of their life, you did something for these people. So you owe them a freaking smile. If you open the door and you're frowning, <clears throat> same way when you open their door, Evan, how, how long does it take you to, to know if you're going to get a sale? At this point in your career, walking into a house, how many seconds? It's not even minutes. Yeah, dude, it's, it's right away. They're, it's the handshake. Yeah. It's the handshake and either come on in or like, right? Don't be, don't be that. 
be that, hey, Evan, Rob, like Rob Richman, here for the appointment. They're like, you know what? Cool. Come on in. How's your day going? Bad? Let's compare. And then you can joke. You can build rapport and do that. But if you're having a bad day, I'm telling you, one of you on this call has to do that. And you have to tell Evan how either stupid it was or how great it worked for you and validate that this shit works. Excuse my language, but it does. And you got to serve your clients to the best of your ability. You have to give them 100% of your best version of yourself every single time. Otherwise, you're going to go broke. And that's real. If you give them a watered down version of yourself, you got to ask yourself, would you have bought? Would you have answered their question? Would you have trusted yourself to give bank information? Look, guys, we meet these people for five minutes, give them a pitch, go through options, do an application, and they got to pay us a monthly premium for a promise and a piece of paper for the rest of their damn life. You got to be really good to get their trust and their belief if this is going to work for you. So get convicted. I'll leave you with this, and then you can have questions if you want, but you're probably tired of me by now. Get convicted. Believe in yourself. Master the systems. Give these people the only the good version of yourself. And when you're done with that last one, crash. Get home and crash. Do whatever you got to do. The beautiful thing about this business is nobody has to know what your habits are, how you calm down, healthy, unhealthy, what's your weekend, what you do for fun. If you go to festivals and do drugs all weekend, it doesn't matter if you give these people the best version of yourself. Because if you're a professional and you can give these people everything you got, you're their hero on the worst day of their life. And keep that stuff in the front of your mind. When you're a professional, be in the professional box. Once you got to be out of that box, doesn't matter. Be a wreck, be you, do whatever you got to do and figure it out but give your clients the best you can and be coachable. You guys are very lucky to have Evan. You're very lucky to have Ty. These guys are rock stars. I've loved them since I met them. I've been so excited to watch their come up and their growth that you guys are really lucky that you got people like this that have made sacrifices that take on more than they bite off more than they can chew at times. And they don't quit and they keep moving forward and they keep leading you by example. That's the number one thing you can ask for in a leader. You guys couldn't be in better hands. Thanks, Rob. Bro, you're making me like tear up over here. I love you, bro. Appreciate you hopping on here. Um, you cool with people reaching out if they got any questions further? Yeah, of course. I got time and I love, dude, impact is the name of the game. So anybody on here, look, if you're, a, if you're brand new, reach out. If you're somebody, and I'll be very transparent about this. I am busy. I have time, but I am busy. So if you're someone that just wants to like ask a dumb question, don't do that. But if you're somebody that actually wants coaching, that has a that has an that has a real question that needs a different voice. Absolutely, reach out and I'll give you everything I got. Awesome. Hey Rob, can I ask a quick question here? Mm -hmm. okay. So, I know there's a couple people on here that they want to do full telesales, huh? Hundred percent work from home, that whole that whole deal. And mm -hmm. I know you got a couple studs that work out of your office, part of different groups, but you also have some people on your team that that kill mm -hmm. it over the phones. Mm -hmm. Um, obviously you're not selling anymore, but what are some tips that you can give? Um, hey, by name, who are the people? I want to see who you're talking about. Um, so, so Dre, Dre Bergs. Where's he at? He's right there. Yep. Raise your hand if you're who he's talking about. He is. He is? I don't see him. Oh, there's more screens. Hold on. <laughs> we got, <laughs> oh, there he is. What up, Dre? All right. Yep. And then. Mitchell Regnus, I know he's he's gonna do a little bit of both, but he came from an agency that was doing full telesales. Same and with Mitchell. Mitchell is Mitchell on the first screen. Where's Mitchell? There you go. All right, cool. Okay, and then okay. I mean, there's a couple. Both look, you both look sharp. So, I I would like so here's the thing: you gotta like you got you gotta be better on the phone than you are in person. And and I I, I don't know on man that conversation we had last night was long. Um. And don't remember if I told you about the realization I had. It's literally the same thing. The presentation is the same damn thing. So the skills that I thought may not have been transferable because all I did was in-home, I'm like, I don't know how to do this. It's the same thing. You got to run the same schedule. Now, the only difference, the only difference is if you're setting appointments via Zoom or if you're doing telesales. Dre, what are you, are you doing telesales or are you doing Zoom? The hope was to do Zooms. 
Okay, okay so Zooms, all right. And then and then Mitchell, what are you doing? I want to do a little bit of both. Try to do it in home and so, all right. So if you're hotel. doing Zooms, if you're doing Zooms, I feel like it's the same schedule as a as a field schedule, protecting your dial time, Monday, Thursday, setting appointments. Now, the deal is, is that everybody that wants to work from home and do telesales for whatever reason, they got themselves convinced that it's like a 20 hour a week gig instead of a 40 hour a week gig. Um, don't be stupid. <laughs> like you want to get paid full time money like you can't work 20 hours. Like that's just it. So if you're doing telesales, it, it, it's going to be a one call close. So that means you better love the phones, bro. If you don't love the phones, telesales ain't it. <laughs> so so you got to love the phones and, and every day is a dial day. And that's what you just got to, you got to prepare yourself mentally that every day is a dial day. The caveats with telesales, you got to overspend. So you got to spend more money on leads on phone sales than you would if you were going in home, in my opinion, it's my humble opinion. And it's not the most educated opinion, but my experience over the last six months where, where a lot of people have transitioned over to that is that the ROI on phone sales is a little bit lower um, and it's the same number of hours, but you don't have to leave. So if it's worth, if that's the kind of thing that's worth it to you, then, then amen, bro, like get after it. But you gotta know that you're, you're pounding the phone. That phone is your best friend, it's not your enemy. That thing doesn't weigh 10,000 pounds, it weighs an ounce and you, it never leaves. So that, I guess that's the advice I would give you. The, the in-home is the same as the phone presentation. Um, you just have to be, you know, my thing with like phones is it's hard to do. Like you got to have the same body language as if you were sitting across the table from somebody because they can hear it in your voice. Like if I'm sitting, if I got to like be like, like on the phones and like not moving around, no, like no body language, no hand gestures. Like, I feel like it would be boring. So you got to like do the same, like pretend like you're right in front of them. That zooms are easier to coach towards, you know, the one call closes, you know, that's a different animal. And I, and I really respect people that are doing that at a high level. Um, you just have to be prepared for it. Instead of closing, you know, let's say average agents close at 50%. You got to be prepared to close a third, you know? So activity turns into everything on that. Um, and where I would set 20 good appointments a week, I would have to, I would have to connect with like at least 50 people a week to get the same results. So just like have the expectation. Beautiful thing about expectations is then like nothing sucks. You know, does that make sense? Like if you have, if you have the proper expectation, like, you know what you're getting yourself into. I knew I was going to war, you know, trying to set 10 good qualified appointments for the next two days, dialing old CRM leads. Like that was, I knew that. So I was never mad at it. Um, for you, if you're like, I'm going to sit and talk to 20 people and write 10 K a week, like you're high. You're not, that's not happening. Um, I would also get really good at, I, I would also not use live transfers as a crutch to get complacent and lazy. So those are really expensive. And if you don't have a lot of, if you don't have a ton of experience, like selling in home or virtually already, I think live transfers are a terrible idea. I think you got to get good at selling virtually or over the phone before you start spending $120 uh, per, per live transfer. So I, does that, does that help? Bye. Thank you. I think the big thing is just that expectation coming in. Yeah. Du you got to double, got to double the activity to get the same results, which is fine because you can do it and you're not leaving. So, I mean, downtime is the enemy. You gotta, you gotta kill all white space. If you got downtime, like go walk your dog or go to the gym, you know, don't sit around, don't watch TV. Like don't TikTok. Don't do that because you're going to kill all of your momentum. You got to stay busy when it's work hours. It's work hours. When it's play hours, it's play hours. And that's a discipline thing. And you just got to hold yourself accountable to it. You can either be a great boss and a great employee or a terrible boss and the worst, worst employee you got. This is the highest paying, easiest job in the world or the lowest paying, biggest nightmare career you could ever have. It's just how you approach it. And that's facts. Make a million dollars a year from your phone or go on unemployment and need food stamps and get evicted from your apartment because you're lazy and you don't hold yourself accountable and you don't ask questions and implement the answers. Is that like real facts? So you got to decide what you want to do. You want to be part of the 1% club that is super disciplined 
Or do you want to be part of, do you want to be a statistic? You want to be one of the 92% of life insurance agents that fall out of the business and go broke. I hate that idea. I love the idea of being in the 1%. It's, it's really scary to think that 92% of the people that come into life insurance fall off. So be part of the good statistic, be part of the 8%. And the 8% are all 1% earners, the ones that don't give up. That's the beauty of it. So be in the 1%, don't give up, hold yourself accountable, be very disciplined, don't be stingy towards your business and you'll be in great shape. It's fire, dude. I actually got a question, Michelle. She raised her hand. Nice. I see it. Last time you. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Michelle. I'm completely new. I'm still doing the the course online. Um, hopefully I'll be done soon. Um, but my question is, what are your mentors like? What? It, who did you plug into? Um, and you know, make you raise your focus. So my mentors are not available to be your mentors anymore. Unfortunately. Oh, no. Well, only, only, I'm only saying that because they're so out of touch with reality now, because it's been so long since they've done this and they've got huge businesses. Um, more than a mentor, I would find a running mate. I think that's way more valuable. Mentor, you can watch all the YouTube sales trainings and the TNL and all of that stuff. I would find somebody who's going through this with you and make that and hold each other accountable. I think that's so much better and so much more valuable at the early stages of your career. Find a running mate, find a partner that you want to do this with and don't let each other down. I don't know them. I don't know the mentors now. I don't know the mentors that are, that are like top producers anymore. I don't know the, I don't know the hall of famers. Um, Ty and Evan might know better. I mean, you got good people on your group. I mean, Kiefer, Evan, Ty. Um, I mean, there was a time, Evan, there was a time when you had the highest IP provider in the entire company. I mean, so you've got this really concentrated pool of big hitters. So I, you can find a mentor and a role model just within your own group, within Compassion or, or Titans. You're really lucky for that. I just think back to when me and Ty started doing this thing, it was just because both of us were so committed there's no turning back that we just always held each other accountable to, to keep on moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good Thank question. You. Cool. Let's wrap this thing up. Rob Richmond, everybody. Appreciate Thank you for hopping on, dude. I appreciate you guys so much. Can't wait to see a board member integrity partnerships, growing, overcoming adversity, not letting anything take you down, but growing from the adversity and changing a lot of lives. So it's an, it was an honor to be on the call today, guys. Um, we'll talk soon. Thanks, dude. Yeah.